ecosystem is a system or a group of interconnected elements formed by the interaction of a community of organisms with their environment. In ecology, the community is defined as a group of plants and animal species occupying a given area. Although ecological communities have a special boundary, they likewise have a spatial context within the larger landscape. A different types of land patchwork like forest, garden, ponds, valley, or any kind of land cover is called a mosaic. Mosaic is a combination of many small pieces of variously colored material to create a larger pattern of image. A landscape mosaic is a product of the boundaries defined by changes in the physical and biological structures of the distinct communities called patches. The study of the cause behind the formation of patches and boundaries and the ecological consequences of the spatial patterns on the landscape is called the landscape ecology. A variety of factors give rise to landscapes, including abiotic, biotic, natural disturbances, and human activities. Climate and geology interact to define the land. Abiotic and biotic factors interact to determine species composition. Disturbance, a discrete event that disrupts communities and populations also initiates succession and creates diversity. Natural disturbances can be a powerful force for change in the landscape. Fire is a natural large-scale disturbance that has both beneficial and adverse effects. Other major natural disturbance regime include wind, floods, storms, especially hurricanes, and animals. Through their activities, they can transform landscape mosaics. Major human-induced disturbances include logging, mining, agriculture, and development function to fragment the landscape. A landscape is a spatially heterogeneous area composed of patches embedded within a matrix. Boundaries are the place where the edge of one patch meets the edge of another. The proximity of patches to each other influences landscape connectivity, which is the ability for interactions to occur among patches. A landscape is not defined by its size but by its scale relative to the organism or process of interest. A boundary is a place where the edge of one patch meets the edge of another. This is an area of contact, separation, or transition between patches. Some boundaries indicate an abrupt change in the physical condition between communities. Other boundaries, however, result from natural disturbances such as fires, storms, and flood. Some boundaries between landscape patches are narrow and abrupt while others are much broader forming a transition zone called an ecotone. Boundaries may vary in length and may be straight, convoluted, or perforated. Functionally, boundaries connect patches through fluxes or flows of material, energy, and organisms. They can also restrict or facilitate the dispersal of seeds, and the movement of animals across landscapes. 
Animal species inhabiting boundary environments are usually those that require plant communities within their home territories. One example is the Bonasa ombelatus. These are restricted to the edge of the environment, therefore referred to as edge species. One example is the Passerina cyanea. Boundaries are often populated by a rich diversity of life. This is due to the blended elements from adjacent patches offering unique habitats to adjacent communities. This phenomenon is called the edge effect. The edge effect is influenced by the area of boundary available and by the degree of contrast between adjoining plant communities. There is also a downside of edge effect. For example, Boundaries appear to be attractive to predators such as crocodiles. Predators often use edges as travel lanes, which increases rates of predation in edge habitats. Patch size and shape influence community structure. Large patches of habitat contain greater number of individuals and species than small patches. In the animal community, there is a general relationship between the body size and the size of an animal's home range. The species can be classified into three, edge, interior, and area-sensitive species. As stated earlier, edge species are restricted to the edge of the environment. And one example is the gray catbird or Dumitella carolinensis. Unlike edge species, interior species are found on the interior of habitats and they stay away from abrupt changes associated with boundary environments. One example is the ovenbird or the Cerus aurocapillus. Intermediate to these two groups are the area insensitive species such as the Carolina chickadee or Parus carolinensis. The type, number, and spatial arrangement of patches on the landscape influence the movement of organisms among patches the population dynamics of species, and community structure. Landscape connectivity is the degree to which the landscape facilitates the movement of organisms among patches and is composed of structural and functional connectivity. The one that relates to the physical arrangement of habitat patches on the landscape is the structural connectivity, while functional connectivity describes the degree to which the landscape facilitates the movement of organism. Patches do not necessarily need to be structurally connected to be functionally connected. Species like birds who are capable of flight are often able to move among patches across considerable distances. Therefore, assessing landscape connectivity requires a species-centered approach that considers factors such as the species mode and range of dispersal and its ability to move to different types of habitat. One structural feature of the landscape that can facilitate an organism's movement between patches of suitable habitat is a corridor. These are strips of vegetation similar to the patches they connect but different from the surrounding matrix in which they are set. They function best as travel lanes for individuals moving within bounds of their home range. But when corridors interconnect to form networks, they offer dispersal routes for species traveling between habitat patches. The theory of island biogeography provides a framework to understand how size and connectivity can interact 
to influence patterns of species richness on patches within the landscape. The number of species established on an island represents a dynamic equilibrium between the immigration of new colonizing species and the extinction of previously established ones. Although the theory of island biogeography has been influential in our understanding of the role of colonization and local extinction, the emergence of metapopulation theory has proven to provide a better framework for understanding patterns of community structure on landscapes. There is a historic elephant migration route in northern Kenya that passes through the Lewa Wildlife Conservancy, connecting Mount Kenya with the greater Samburu ecosystem. Over the last decades, human development has interfered with this migration, causing the two ecosystems to be cut off and isolating populations of elephants. Together with major farming operators, local communities and other conservation organizations, a specially designed elephant underpass was constructed beneath a busy highway that connects northern Kenya with the rest of the country. The underpass was opened in January 2011 and the elephants caught on quickly. In 2014, it was used more than 1,000 times. This simple piece of infrastructure now ensures the safety of migrating animals and the passing motorists. When the elephant corridor was first designed, no one expected its success. As wonderful as this passage is, the highway cuts through a large area of the Mount Kenya Elephant Corridor and there's a critical need for a second underpass at another major crossing point. As the land around the highway quickly gets built up, we will lose the ability to secure this valuable historic corridor once and for all for the future of elephants. Without the ability to migrate, elephants of Mount Kenya will become isolated, cut off from a more diverse gene pool, and become vulnerable to climate change. We hope you will join us in this crucial project to protect both people and elephants in northern Kenya. Asante sana. Habitat fragmentation and human exploitation have reduced many species to isolated or semi-isolated populations. These subpopulations inhabiting fragmented habitats form metapopulations. Metapopulation persistence is a dynamic balance between the extinction and recolonization of empty habitat patches. Colonization involves the movement of individuals from occupied patches to unoccupied patches to form new local populations. The ability of individuals to disperse between habitat patches is directly related to their spatial arrangement on the landscape. The rate of colonization declines with increasing isolation. The risk of local extinction increases with decreasing patch size. Communities occupying habitat patches connected by movements of the constituent species make up the meta-community. The interaction among communities is influenced by size, shape, spatial arrangement of habitat patches and the matrix in which they are embedded. 
the spatial configuration and species composition of patches influence dispersal and the processes of colonization among the local communities. In turn, the species composition of patches determines the nature of species interactions which influences the potential for new species to colonize a patch as well as the ability of current species to persist. The mosaic of communities defines the landscape as ever-changing. Disturbances that are large and small, frequent and infrequent, alter the biological and physical structures of communities making up the landscapes, giving way to the process of succession. This view of landscapes suggests a shifting mosaic. This mosaic is composed of patches in the phase of successional development. This is a representation of a forested landscape. Each patch is continuously changing. Although it is not static, the average characteristic of the forest may remain relatively constant in steady state. The shifting mosaic steady state describes how a forested landscape's plant composition might change after the disturbance and given a sufficiently long period of time. These concepts describe the stages of how an ecosystem might develop post-disturbances and suggest that the final stage of development is a steady state where the growth primary production living organic material equals the respiration of living plants. However, the shifting mosaic steady state concept suggests that these are not exactly equal, but are actually oscillating around the mean over a long period of time.